Hello, I'm Alan, and I'm really glad you're here. We're going to continue to talk about the unique creature that you are, and specifically, again, about the inner man. I feel that the inner man is a lost uh, vision in the church today. It's kind of a overlooked uh, part of the person that you are, a piece of the puzzle. And because we've overlooked it so much and kind of brushed over uh, the understanding of the inner man, many people have fallen out of the desire to pray, the desire to grow spiritually, and to begin pursuing God in a way of, of chasing after Him rather than growing in Him. But when you can see the inner man and see the inner body that God, God has brought to life in you, it helps you understand the reasoning in Scripture, the purpose for Scripture, for things like praying in tongues, uh, reading the Word, and just how important those things are to your success and victory in life. And so I want to continue to just expose some of the truth about the inner man and again the unique creature that you became. I think the church is really just not understood or just kind of skimmed across the top of the miracle that happened when you were born again. It was such a miracle, such a divine miracle that God designed in our salvation. And the reason that we can believe for victory, the reason we can believe for uh, the impossible to happen in our life, the impossible to happen in the ministry that God has for you, is because of this inner man that God brought to life. And if we just skim across it, listen, it's okay if you just accept that I'm a Christian, I'm going to heaven. If you make it to heaven, praise God, you've already won the biggest victory uh, of your life. But to really have an impact on, on this world, I really think that it's important for us to see what all God has done and why, why we need to pray in the Spirit, why we need to devote time to meditate the Word and confess the Word, why it's important that we worship God. And, and when, you just, when you see the unique creature that you are once you're born again, then you understand why these things are necessary and they can't just be brushed aside as as nice things to do on the side but really they are the the um, the engine that causes us to grow up and mature in the spirit so let's let's go back to first corinthians and we're going to cover some of the same verses but the reason i'm going over and over on the same verses is because there's an imagery in there that when you begin to see it by the help of God, by the help of the Holy Spirit, by the help of Revelation, when you begin to see the imagery that's painted within the verses, um, it gets into you. This is truth that will stick with you forever. And then you'll be amazed how many other scripture verses that are unlocked easily when you see who you are and understand what these verses are talking about in other, other scripture like in Colossians and Ephesians and Galatians. So we're in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, starting in verse 6. And before I start, just a reminder, God has great things in store for you. But they're not going to happen if you just hum-hum, hum-ha through life and be a nice person and love God. They come when you pursue God, when you pursue His will, you pursue growth in Him, that's when you'll begin to see Him walk you forward into your calling. So many people are striving to get God to use them and trying to find different avenues for God to use them. They don't realize if they just invested time, the right time, the right tools into the spiritual growth, God, God's waiting for them. They're not waiting for God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor in the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory. So Paul's talking about wisdom from God, a mystery that's been hidden from before time, our time. Before the ages for our glory. Verse 8. For none of the rulers of this ages, age knew. For had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. For it is written, 
eye has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So this verse sometimes is quoted by people who say, you know, there's things that happen in life that we just don't understand. God's ways are higher than our ways, and we just must accept that there's things that we won't ever understand about God until we get to heaven. But And they'll use this verse, eyes not seen, ears not heard. Uh, nor venture to the heart of man the things which God prepared for those who love him. And, uh, and they use this verse to try to emphasize there's just mysteries and wisdom from God, things of God's plan that you'll never understand until you get to heaven. But that's the opposite of what this verse is saying. This verse is saying that there's wisdom that God had to withhold from mankind until Jesus came. But now that Jesus has come and you are born again God wants to share that wisdom that he had to withhold from others before you before Jesus before salvation um, wisdom that God had to withhold from the disciples before they were saved because they couldn't understand why could not the why could the disciples not understand the parables of Christ and he said until after they were saved well that's similar to this point that there is wisdom and mysteries that God had to withhold. But now, because you're born again, he doesn't have to withhold those uh, mysteries or wisdom again because now you can understand that. Well, what what's different in you, in a man now, after Jesus, than the man before Jesus? We understand it being that we have a new nature. But also that that new nature brought to life our inner man so now, because our inner man, our inner body, is alive. See, you have an inner body that is alive. There was a, a man, oh, Pastor Dave met him, Dave Roberson met him, and uh, was in some of his services. His name was Ronald Cohen. I wrote his name down. It's spelled Ronald, R-O-N-A-L-D, I believe, and Cohen, a, a C-O-Y-N-E, C-O-Y-N-E, Ronald Cohen. And if you look him up on the internet and look him up on YouTube, you'll see videos of him. This is a man who, as a child, uh, something happened in his blind in one eye, and uh, he was prayed for in a service for, for something else, but his eye opened up, and he could see out of his eye that had no eyeball. And it was quite a miracle that it was such a miracle that they even went, went around and, and, and used it as a testimony of, God's miracle power and through his whole life he would go around start off as a child and through his till he died and grew up and and had a ministry where he'd travel around and testify of the miracle power of God and they would take and they would put a um, blindfolds and and uh, tape uh, uh, duct tape and tape uh, cloths and everything over his eye ball the the eye that did work in the natural and so all that was left was a uh, an eye socket and because he'd take his plastic eye out and all the and you, he'd let you look and you come up and look and in in the, in, in this the the one eye was completely taped shut uh and in in covered and in the eye socket was he'd take out the plastic eye and there was just an eye socket no eyeball just an eye socket and Ronald Cohen would testify that God, God, when he was a kid, somehow opened up his ability to see uh, without an eyeball. And they would test it every service. That was the service, come and see. And people would come and they'd bring uh, newspaper clippings and different writings. They'd write notes and he would read it um, from the eye socket that had no natural eyeball. And, and he would do this his whole life, and they, they tried to debunk him. They tried to prove it was a, a fake, but they never could because it was an actual miracle that God opened up his eye to see without an eyeball. And Pastor Dave was in some of his services and knew this man, and he shared about how God explained to him how it worked, was that God opened up his spiritual eye to see into the natural world. And we have a testimony in the scripture of that, but the opposite, and we'll go there in a minute. And so in explaining the inner man, the inner body, Pastor Dave used uh, 
Ronald Colhan's testimony to, to help us to understand that I have an inner body. In fact, every person born is born spiritually with a body and naturally with a body that are joined together. They're actually one body that, that's connected to both worlds, the spiritual world and the natural world. But when you're born again, the, the, the new nature brought to life the inner body, your spiritual body, but didn't bring to life your outward body. So now you're kind of in a war with an inner body, an inner man, and an outward man. And scripture tells us that we're to mortify the natural man, uh, put to death the natural man, while we are to help grow and educate, grow in knowledge, uh, the inner man. And so Ronald Cohen's testimony helps us to see that uh, God brought to brought, woke up or opened up his spiritual eye to see in the natural world. And, and most Christians, they only see out of their natural eyes. They never see out of their spiritual eyes. And in that example, Pastor Dave would say, it, it'd be similar to uh, a man having his uh, leg cut off in a wound and having no leg and then walking around and you look in and going, oh my gosh, he's walking and there's nothing there. Well, there is something there, it's his inner body. And, and just like you, you have an inner body and an outward body. You have a spiritual body and a natural body. Every person born, every person conceived has, has developed exactly the same, the natural body and the, and the spiritual body. But your spiritual body, your inner man came to life by the new nature, the new nature, uh, took out the old nature, was replaced, replaced the old nature of darkness that you received from Adam and born you, birthed you into the family of God and brought to life your inner body. So now you have the ability because the inner body is just similar to your outward body. It's not mystical. Sometimes when people think about the spirit, they think of like, uh, we're like a ghost we, or vapor. We're like the cloud. And we just have, you know, every, people have tried to explain the inner body in such crazy ways. And they're doing their best. And again, if all you ever comprehend as a Christian is that I got born again and I'm going to heaven, then you've already won. You really don't need to learn anything from me. But if you want to have a, an impact on this world and understand why I need to pray in tongues, why I need to learn uh, things from the Word of God and not just man's opinion, then you'll understand that you have an inner body that came to life the moment you were saved. And now that that inner body is alive, think about it. Your inner body is alive and that inner body, it doesn't have to be mystical. Just it, It's very practical. Your inner body has a, a, a spiritual uh, brain, a brain material made of spirit. Right now you have that. And you have a natural brain made of, of meat, made of, of uh, carnal. And the natural brain can't understand spiritual things. But the spiritual brain, now that it's alive because of the new nature, you now can understand the wisdom of God. A billion years from now, in our time, we'll be sitting around the throne room worshiping God, and we're going to learn something new, something every day we'll learn and go, oh, God, you are amazing. And we will gain spiritual truth of God that we'll never forget. And it will be able to contain that material. We'll understand. You understand when you look at your child, uh, when I look at my children, when they learn in school that ed they're educating their natural brain. But it's the same with your spiritual brain. Your spiritual brain must be educated the truths of God. And that only comes from God. You can't get spiritual truths from a natural creature. It won't work. If it worked, then God could have taught the Old Testament saints and the disciples before they were saved the truths, but he couldn't. And that's, that's what Paul is talking about here in 1 Corinthians, that there's wisdom and there's truths and there's mysteries that God wanted to teach men but he couldn't because they were carnal and their, their spiritual body, their spiritual man was dead, dark. Not dead like a, a, a dead animal on the road, but death. It would produce death. And God is life and light and 
and and they couldn't under comprehend or understand the 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 even the simple things of God, just the very basics of obey and do what I tell you, or you'll be or you'll suffer. Kind of was the Old Testament because that's the best that man could understand. But once man was able to be born of God, he he began a process that doesn't quit uh, until the trumpet sounds, and that process called transformation is allowing you no matter where you start and me no matter where I started to begin this process of transformation of learning who we are in Christ growing in the knowledge of Christ uh, and mortifying our natural man uh, and walking in the things that God has for us and embarrassingly if I can put it that way or sadly the church has given up the church as a whole has given up on spiritual growth they've repackaged salvation as uh, morality, serve God, do good, uh, be a good man, go to church, love God, give God's offering. And in that, we've thrown in th- the spiritual truths like reading your Bible. And and uh, and th- I'm just, I'm not picking on any church, but in general, this has kind of been the concept of Christianity uh, now in America is be a good person, go to church, um, don't lie so much. Don't cheat on your spouse. Don't cheat on your taxes too much. And come to church, give your offering, be good. And, uh, you know, praying tongues and reading the word is important, but they're almost look like they're, they're offerings we give to God. They're things that we give to God. But in scripture, if we really see the word is food for our inner man, the word is what our inner man starves for. It's the milk and the meat that we need. The word of God, you know, is food. If I were to talk to you and say, look, um, yeah, it's good to eat, eat food, you know, it's good, but you can do without it, you know, don't worry too much about it, you know, like eating, you understand, it, it's important to survive, and, and, and you crave food, well, your inner man craves food too, but unfortunately, most Christians are never uh, aware enough of their spiritual body to understand that it's starving, it's, it's hungry for spiritual knowledge that only comes from God. You can't get spiritual knowledge from the world of man. It has to come from God. And that's why praying in tongues is so important. That's why uh, reading your word and confessing your word is so important because these are actually actual food that your inner body craves. And most Christians have a starving inner man because they, they just morally try to serve God and they've given up on trying to believe for the miraculous or the impossible in their life. And, and that's what God wants from you and from me is to start believing and, and, and spending our focus, our time on our investing on our inner man so it will grow strong in the knowledge of who we are, who we really are. And that knowledge we gain is from God. So verse 10, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Now this isn't talking about the Holy Spirit here, because if it was, that would be kind of odd that the, the Holy God is seeking God's... It doesn't make sense. The word Spirit here means your new nature brought to life your inner man, and now you have a craving and a hunger... Just like your natural body hungers food, your inner body, your inner man is hungering uh, truth that comes from God, and God is willing to give it to you. God wants to give it to you. Well, great, I want to know this, those things, Pastor. Tell me, how do I get those things? Can God just drop it on me? Because if He could drop it on me, that'd be great. Well, it's the same way you have to eat every day if you want to feed your natural body. You need to eat every day to feed your spiritual man. It's that practical. It's that simple. It's not mystical. It's not uh, the anointing has to fall on you or the heavens have to open up for you to have an experience. It's very practical. Your spiritual body craves food like your natural body does. And the moment you accept that you have a spiritual body and a natural body, you are on a path to the miraculous. Until you see that, I doubt if it's very difficult for you to purposely walk into the miraculous and the impossible. I believe that it's very difficult for a Christian if they don't realize why they do the things they do. 
because if you don't realize why you do the things you do, um, it's, it can be pretty easy for the enemy to talk you out of doing the things that are important. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. Again, it's not talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about your inner body, your inner man brought to life by the new nature, now craves the things of God. And because it craves the things of God and because it's born again, you now can comprehend and understand and accept the truth, the spiritual wisdom of God that he's been holding back for, for before our time. Now he can share it, and he wants to share this wisdom, uh, these understandings from him directly to you. That's how important it is, your inner body coming to life. Now, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians. And we've been here before, chapter 4, verse 16. These, these verses must be explained. A lot of times we just kind of brush past them, and I'm trying to provoke you to understand and accept that there's there's such simple but deep understandings that are available for you about who you are and who with well, a miracle the absolute incredible divine miracle that god did when he birthed you when you accepted christ and asked him to born you birth you into his family something incredible happened and and a miracle happened and that miracle is there to allow you and me to walk into uh, incredible things. It's not just for the preachers, not for the, just for the apostles and prophets and evangelists. It's for every believer to walk in this beautiful, powerful uh, relationship with God that will cause you to change your world and turn your world upside down. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. All Bible reading goes better with coffee, by the way. Pastor Dave used to joke, I say, if your Bible doesn't have coffee stains on it, you're not anointed, I think he'd say. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16. Therefore, do not lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day so there's something in this that we have to try to understand what does he mean my outer man is perishing our inner man is being renewed day by day and when we can see that we have an inner body that was brought to life that i have to renew that inner man uh, in knowledge like you may someone may ask me in fact someone did they said well when i go to heaven if i'm just born again say i'm I'm a 40-year-old person, a 40-year-old, say a 40-year-old man got born again, and we can see in Scripture calling uh, new Christians, uh, newborn, calling them babes in Christ, people who, who did, haven't grown up and they, they don't pursue holiness, they don't pursue the knowledge of God, they just get born again, uh, that they need their, their child, their children, their, their, their newborn babes, uh, so if a 40-year-old man comes to the altar, gets born again, and then dies in a car wreck that night, when they go to heaven, are the, is their inner body a little baby in heaven? You know, are there people, when they get born again, is their inner body physically, spiritually, physically uh, like a baby? And, and the answer to that is absolutely not. The inner body is the same. And, and so it doesn't shrink like a little baby and, and grow the growth he's talking about when we're born again is not a physical growth within the inner body, that the inner body shrinks to a little baby and, and someone 40 year old who gets born again has a little baby inside of them. It, the, the, the imagery of the newborn babe is, and, and needing milk and little children is always talking about the amount of spiritual knowledge that a person contains. That the, the spiritual knowledge that a person contains is always held in the spiritual body or more specific the spiritual brain inside the spiritual body and so when you're born again your your spiritual man is full of darkness just like your outward man is but when you're born again that new nature came into you so you have a new nature 
you also have an outward body, you also have an inner body that's connected to the outward body, cell for cell. That means you have an inner a spiritual brain connected to the natural brain. So your, your soul, mind, will, and emotions, is split, connected with part of you, the natural man being dark, because it wasn't saved, and the inner body, the spiritual part of you being light, brought to life by the new nature. So all the knowledge that your inner man had before you were born again uh, was from darkness. And you never, you could not ex understand and accept light because you were dark. But the moment you were born again, the inner man brought to was brought to life by the new nature, meaning the spiritual man, the inner man, the inner brain, the knowledge the inner brain had, the spiritual brain had, was, you might say, wiped away by the blood of Christ, cleansed, and now is ready to receive truth and knowledge that comes from your Father, spiritual truth and spiritual knowledge that can only come from God. That's the only place it can come. Now you can hear it through a man, a preacher may preach something he got from God, and it will come into you. And you'll understand this when you're in a, in a service, in a worship, and someone plays really nice. I remember uh, one time we had a, a, um, a banquet, and we had two, two guys who played the piano and, and, were, and, and sang. And, and the one guy was a pastor's kid who always struggled with alcohol. But what a man, he would just touch the piano and the anointing would fall. He was such, had such a good heart, but he struggled in areas. And then we had another guy who, who was born again, but he was just very classically trained. And, and, and I remember during one banquet, he got up to play the piano and he started to play and it was fast and, and amazing. He played so well and it was in the natural beautiful, but you didn't feel it. It didn't connect with me. I just thought that was really nice. And then the other guy got up, and, and I know his background, being a, a pastor's kid and having struggles, but he got up, and as soon as he touched the keys, let me tell you, you can feel I felt a wave of God's anointing just follow those musical notes, and it, it hit me, impacted me. I thought, man, that guy's God's got to call on that guy. And after the banquet, the reason, reason I remember it, because after the banquet, I remember I talked to a, another preacher, and they said, wasn't that amazing, those two piano players? And I said, yeah, they were great, great specials. And he said, no, 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 don't know the difference between the two of them. Wasn't it amazing? And I thought, oh, you saw it too? And I, he said, yeah, I seen it. I felt it. He said, he said, I seen it too. The first guy was so skilled and so great. And he said, the second guy was okay. And that's the moment I learned that people who don't seek after spiritual truths can see carnal things as being spiritual when they're just professional. And because uh, I saw the exact opposite. I didn't, wasn't impressed with the professionalism as much as I was impressed with the anointing of God that was able to come on the second, the second piano player's uh, calling. And, and so you understand that when you are in a worship service and someone does something in excellence, uh, every key is perfect, every note is perfect, but you don't feel the presence of God. You don't feel the anointing. That's because you're, you're, you're aware of the spiritual creature you are. You're aware that your spiritual man responds to God's spirit. Your spiritual man responds to the anointing. And it's the same thing with teachers, that you can listen to a teacher and if they're teaching by the anointing, by the Spirit, and they're bringing truths that they got from God, truths that got from he came from heaven, then your inner man just drinks it in. It's this, oh, that feels so good. That's so right. There's something right about this. And you may not be able to articulate what it is. You just know that that is truth. And that's your spiritual man saying, I received that because that came from God. Even though it came through a man or through a prophecy, or through a, a worship service or a song, your spiritual man completely understands spiritual truths that come from heaven, where your natural man is just carnal. It doesn't, it does it, no, oh, that's nice. It, it understands professionalism maybe and appreciates excellence, which is nice, but excellence will never replace spiritual truths or the anointing of God. So therefore do not lose heart 
even though our outer man is perishing, yet the inner man is being renewed day by day. So this might help you understand why is it my inner man is being renewed if it's if I'm complete in Christ. Why what is being renewed in my inner man? I like we have to understand this verse. Can you know that word renewed means revenue uh, re um, to to renew to rebuild. Um, it's it's when they they take a building and they 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 go inside and they redo everything. So if my inner man is complete in Christ, what am I doing? Renewing it. Why am I rebuilding? It didn't say build. It's rebuilding. That gives us a hint that the inner man now has the capacity to understand spiritual truths, whereas before uh, it could only stand uh, truths of darkness because it had a nature of darkness. But now, because you have a nature of light, your inner man can understand truths that come directly from God. And that's why you can now, as a born-again believer, have the capacity from the moment you're born again until the rest of eternity to learn truths that come directly from God who created the universe, who created everything in the universe. I mean, the amazing, the amazing intellect of God is not beyond your capacity now. He wants to share truth and wisdom that comes from his, his mind, from his wisdom, from his throne room directly to you. I, it can come through a preacher, yes, but he wants to give it directly to you in your prayer closet. Again, hopefully if you see this, you'll begin to understand why praying in tongues is such a, an important avenue of passing spiritual knowledge from him to you. And reading the Word is so important. And meditating in the Word of God because it's feeding your inner man what it's desiring. Your inner man doesn't desire steak and pizza um, no matter how much you want to say it does when you pray it it doesn't your inner man desires truth and knowledge uh, and understanding that it's hungry for it's seeking for that truth now that it's born again and now that it's, you're, it's born again the inner body is seeking truth and knowledge from your heavenly father so let me go back to ronald cohen Again, spelled C-O-Y-N-E. Look him up on YouTube and on the internet, Ronald Cohen, and you can see see the incredible miracle that happened that God opened his spiritual eye to see into the natural world. And we have some history in the Bible that shows us the opposite. I'm going to take you to 2 Kings um, chapter 6, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 14. And this is Elisha, and uh, the king of Syria is trying to kind of hunt him down and capture him and find him. And they wake up, him and his servant, and, uh, and the king of Syria has sent an army to go surround the city, that, the town that Elisha was at. So here's Elisha probably having coffee in the morning, waking up and having his anointed coffee. And verse 14, therefore he sent horses and chariots and a great army there, the, the king of Syria did. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And a servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? And, you know, a lot of preachers use this verse and to preach out of, you know, seeing things God's way. But he says, alas, master, what shall we do? So the servant goes out and sees the army surrounded. This is giant army surrounding them. And he panics. We're going to die. And he answered, do not fear. Elisha answered the servant, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than who are with them. And so pause there the servant looks and says Elisha me one two army chariots horses soldiers Elisha me one two those who are with us are more than those who are with them one two multitudes uh, I'm with a crazy prophet 
And then Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. Now he could see. He already seen in the natural. He already seen the army. So what's he talking about? Open his eyes. He wasn't blind, but he wasn't able to see. He wasn't seeing what Elisha saw, what God opened Elisha's eyes to see. Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So the mountain was full with horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And so when the Syrians came down to him, Elisha prayed to the Lord and said, Strike the people, I pray, with blindness. And he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. And then it goes on how Elisha led them away and, and had victory. But I want you to see that practically this is very simple. That their inner man, because you had an inner man all the way from Adam for the rest of uh, man's existence, every person uh, conceived is conceived with the design of having a spiritual body and a natural body. And in the, in the spiritual body is a nature, a nature of light or darkness. And the nature is what brings the inner body either to light or to darkness. The outer body is left to fall off of us. And uh, eventually we know when the trumpet sounds, us believers receive a, a new body, an eternal body that doesn't, isn't corruptible, that doesn't age, but also doesn't contradict the newborn inner man. And so we, we won't go into it today, but there's other scriptures in the New Testament about opening up our eyes, that the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. And, and it's not meant to be mystical. It's meant to be practical. Ronald Cohen, God opened up his spiritual eye to see in the natural world. We've seen the servant of Elisha that God opened up his spiritual eye to see in the spiritual world. And right now you have a spiritual man that's alive. It's a spiritual body. It's an inner body because you're born again. It's now alive. You can understand the deep things of God. The new nature brought to life the inner body. And all the knowledge that it had before was wiped out by the blood of Christ and cleansed. So now it's starving. It's, it's hungry for truth. It's seeking. Let's go back to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2. It's seeking, verse 10. But God has revealed them to us. What has he revealed? The deep wisdom, the mysteries of God. Um, he's revealed them to us through his spirit. Talking about now that I have a new, new nature inside of my inner man, that spirit man, the inner man, which is alive by the new nature, now can understand and comprehend deep, great wisdom and mysteries of God. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Our inner man is hungry. It's searching. It's looking and longing for truth that come only from the Father. That's in you right now. Now, most Christians, we, we've quenched that hunger and, and just ignored it and become spiritually unaware. And it's amazing to me when I watch Christians who seek after a move of God. They seek after an open heaven. They seek after uh, anointings and giftings, and, and, and they travel all over the place seeking so many things when, when really if they just stopped, just stop. Right now inside of you, your inner man is longing, searching right now for truth that comes from the Father. Quit looking for it out there. Quit looking for it in the glory. Quit looking for it in, in sensationalism and things. Stop. It's right there. You have a father who also wants to teach you and, and guide you and direct you and fill you full of his wisdom and his life and his truths. But that doesn't come from out there. It doesn't come just by God dropping it on you. You have to feed your inner man with truth and knowledge. You have to feed it. Jesus, they said, can we get you some bread? And 
He said, you know, my food is, is, is not the food that you have. Your inner man is alive and the food that it seeks is the Word of God and the truth that comes from the Word of God. The Holy Spirit, when you pray in tongues, that's, that's revelation knowledge directly from God filling your spiritual brain, your spiritual man with such truth. It's really simple. Where do you keep the truth that you gain? Where does it go? You know, some try, people try to explain, well, my new nature I, grows in knowledge. Well, I, I understand the, how we can say that, but really the new nature brought to life your inner body, your inner man. So you have a spiritual brain. It's the same, same as your natural brain. When you learn ABC, your natural brain is what contains that knowledge. It's, you know, that's how people learn. Well, your spiritual brain learns the same way. Ronald Cohen was a great example. I love how Pastor Dave brought it forward to help explain the inner body. Um, I won't go into Luke 16, which we've been into about the people, uh, the rich man and the poor man Lazarus. Um, you have an inner body. It's going to last forever. And, and that inner body is a spiritual body that now that it's alive and full of life is longing to be renewed in the knowledge of God. It's seeking the knowledge, it's hungering, it wants to pursue the deep things of God. Let's not live shallow. Let's not just live with uh, accepting uh, a boring Christianity. We've got to shake this world. This world is starving for a revival, starving for truth, starving for a real example of God. It's time, to, I think, for the church to re-honor the name of Jesus and bring back the respect for the name of Jesus. Now we say in the name of Jesus, and, and people usually expect nothing to happen. And, and that's not what the name of Jesus is supposed to bring. It's supposed to bring power and, and earth-shaking uh, answers to situations. I believe because we've been watered down with generations of, of boring teaching, and, and we've lost focus of what our purpose is once we're born again. Our purpose is to lay our life down for the gospel, seek God, and let Him lead our steps, step by step, help us to grow in Him, and fulfill the will of God that He has for us specifically. He wants to change this world through you and through me. Verse 10, But God revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of man except the Spirit of man which is in him? Talking about... Before you're saved, you have the spirit of man in you. That's talking about your old nature that you received from Adam. That means you seek the things of man. We don't blame people who are not saved for being not saved. You know, sometimes it's funny to me when we try to preach holiness uh, to unsaved people and try to even regulate holiness to unsaved people. It makes no sense to me because they're not saved. They're sinners. So, I mean, it's by nature they're going to want to sin. What level they want to sin is up to them, but they're still sinners. You can take an alcoholic and tell him to quit drinking, and he'll quit drinking. You saved his liver, but he's still going to go to hell as a non-alcoholic. You want to focus our message from the church to being, hey, you need to get born again. And now that you're born again, we need you to grow up spiritually and live holy. But we don't need to try to regulate holiness to unsaved people because they're sinners by nature. And that's what that means, that of what man knows the things of man except the spirit of the man which is in him. So by the nature of being an uh, unsaved man, you're going to want to learn about the things of man. And the whole world is built on this system of how to please uh, the nature of a unsaved man. It's time for the church world to quit acting like mere man and start acting like children of God. For what man knows the things of a man except by the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except by the spirit of God. Um, you have the spirit of God in you, the nature of God, the new nature in you. So now, because you have that new nature in you, your inner man is born again. Your inner man is alive and full of light. It can now grasp and hold on to truths. Truths you'll never forget. Truth that stays in there forever. And that's why even these videos I'm so pleased to do because I feel that we're putting building blocks of tr spiritual truths 
uh, that will stick with you, that will help God build on top of that, brick upon brick of truth, that won't leave you. There's things that I heard in services and heard in prayer and heard through prophecies in my past that an imagery that I've received uh, from God that is like building blocks of truth in me that God, because I have it in me, God can give me more truth. And these truths are laying, are building me to a place of renewing in knowledge, rebuilding, renovating uh, the inner man's inner mind, the spiritual brain, the spiritual mind, uh, renovating it, rebuilding it in, in truths of light, truths from God that are helping me to walk into the impossible. The impossible being whatever the will of God is for me. It can be miracles. It can be signs and wonders. Uh, it can be victory from God and not from this world. Uh, but we cannot get the impossible from the possible. You cannot get the spirit, spiritual truths from the natural man. They have to come from God. And your inner man will know the difference. You already know what I'm talking about if you've been in a service. And, and, and there's times I went to preach in one place. And I remember I was sharing and... and and the, it was kind of, everyone got quiet, and you could tell they were just receiving the truth, and 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 they didn't understand what was going on, but it felt good. And it's because their inner man was drinking in the truths, and and the truth from God, because our inner man is searching. And I, and I'll read this again. And I'll close with this verse again. First Corinthians. We'll just read chapter two. And we're going to read verses 6, and we're going to read through 10. Second, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 6 through 10. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. And in later videos, we'll go into the different sources of wisdom. And Paul talks about this in the first chapter, about natural wisdom, carnal wisdom versus spiritual wisdom. But today we're talking about where that where that spiritual wisdom goes and where the natural wisdom goes. They go to two different places. The natural man that you have, the natural brain, cannot ever comprehend the spiritual truth of God. If it could, God would have taught it to you before you were saved. He would have taught it to the disciples. He would have taught it to the Old Testament saints. But they could not understand. But now that we're born again, we can. he's not withholding any secret from us however we speak wisdom verse 6 among those who are mature yet not the wisdom of this age nor the rules of this age of the rules of this age who are coming to nothing but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of our glory which none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory now here, real simple, simply he's talking about that the, uh, the, the Pharisees and, 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 and them, they were the ones who had to crucify Christ because the high priest had to crucify Christ. The, just like in the Old Testament, the high priest had to sacrifice the Lamb of God, the little innocent Lamb. Well, God needed the high priest to sacrifice Christ as the Lamb of God to fulfill the the right for salvation for us had they known he was the Christ, the real christ they would never have crucified him but it is written i has not seen nor ear heard nor nor have entered into the heart of man the things which god has prepared for those who love him but god has revealed them these mysteries these secrets these spiritual wisdom um god has revealed them to us not through bible college not through training not through um uh callings not just to the apostles prophet pastor teacher evangelist to us to the whole body to everyone who's born again but god has revealed them to us through his spirit for the spirit searches all things yes the deep things of god your inner man is starving searching hungering for truth that comes from god now, if we invest our life into just going out and being good and, 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 and trying to reach the world, that's a great thing. God's pleased with any good work that anyone does in the name of Christ that brings people to Jesus. 
but in you is an inner body, an inner man that's alive now, that is full of life because of the new nature in it. You have a new nature, you have an inner body, you have an outer body. You have those in you right now. The inner body that's alive because of the new nature now is ready and wanting and hungering for truth. It's searching, it's, it's seeking. And, and I hate to admit, I in my natural man, um, there's been times where I've hungered for something. And I remember one time uh, hungering for a good hamburger. But the problem is my favorite hamburger place, which is Burger King, uh, ha- is not the same. Doesn't have good fries. My favorite f- French fry place is McDonald's, and and I hate to admit it, my nan, I hungered for a good burger and good fries, and sure enough, I found a Burger King, and after I got my burger from Burger King, I drove around looking for a McDonald's. They're not too far apart anyway so I can get a fries. I was being driven, searching by the hunger for something specific that I wanted. Good burger, good fries. Well, my inner man is like that now, so is yours. It's hungering for truth, but you can't find it any other place. It's got to come from God. And yes, you can get wisdom from God from preachers, but the best place to get it is from the Word itself. You reading the Word and meditating the Word, you praying in the Holy Ghost is feeding the inner man what it's searching for. Truth, wisdom, understanding, knowledge. It's hungering for that. And your food for your inner body, your food for your inner man is spiritual truth. Feed it. Feed it and watch what happens. Nothing is impossible for you. There's no mountain you face. There's no circumstance you face. There's no fear you face. There's no failure you face. There's no physical thing you face. There's no circumstance, nothing you face that can't be bulldozed over, knocked out of the way, conquered by the impossible spiritual truth of revelation that will come from you simply spending time with the teacher, the Holy Spirit, and allowing him to teach you from his word and from his revelation, from the mind of God, the mysteries. The mysteries are the deep understandings. The mysteries are God's will for you. Let's change the world. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's always such a pleasure to be with you. God bless you.